Uh, a quick overview of resumes and interviewing techniques that you can use. Um, just as an FYI, we do have a table in the back that has schedules, workshop schedules, as well as um, some more information about uh, putting together a resume and other handouts that will give you information about what work one can do for you. So don't forget to grab some of those before you leave today. Okay, well, um, if you've been out looking for a job, you kind of have gotten an idea that a lot of the stuff that used to work doesn't work anymore. Um, we see people over and over again, and they're like, I can't believe I've been unemployed this long. Um, I'm doing all the things I've always done, and the jobs just aren't there. Well, they are there. Um, but employers are expecting something a little bit different than what we've always done. Um, you know, when you're working, you don't think about these things. Uh, I've met, I can't tell you how many people who have never had to interview for a job. They never had to submit a resume. They were friends, said, hey, why don't you come down? Mom and dad work here. Come on down, we'll give your kids a job. So this, for the first time, they're out there looking for a job. And I'm gonna tell you right now, it's way outside most of our comfort zones. And what I'm going to be asking you to do, and what I'm going to be telling you to do, or recommending you do, let me put it like that, is going to be probably way outside your comfort zone. Because um, once you step outside your comfort zone, that's where the magic is. That's where it happens. That's where the jobs are. But you have to be willing to step outside that comfort zone. And to top it off, every single person that you talk to is an expert. I'm standing up here, I'm an expert, and I'm going to tell you what to do, too. <laughs> that you know what happens, they're right, I'm right. Everybody who tells you you need to do it this way, you need to do it that way, they're right, at least for one employer, for one position that they apply for at work, okay? So everybody's going to give you a whole lot of information. A lot of it, you know, you're going to just have to kind of pick and choose your way through and find out what works best for you. Um, there are no silver bullets. I can promise you that. There is no one way, guaranteed, absolute, proof positive, Harry Potter formula spell that's going to get you a job, even get you an interview. I can't guarantee that. But what I can do is tell you what employers have told us, what they're looking for, what they expect to hear, what they expect to see. Okay? And then you'll have to sift through and find out what works for you. All right, let's start talking about resumes. Is it safe to assume everybody in here has a resume? Yes? Hello? Yes. Yes. Yeah, oh good, good. Um, how's that working for you? Not, not so good, maybe. Used to work when you first started sending them out and everybody was like, hey, yeah, come on in, let's talk. And suddenly, and it's dropping off, and it's dropping off, and it's dropping off. Yeah. Yeah, that happens, you know? <laughs> that happens. Um, you know, you send it out to uh, employers, you send out an email, you attach it to your online applications, maybe you're doing it that way, or cold call, just walking around or driving around, handing it to, hi, can I just leave my resume? Yeah, does that sound familiar? Yeah. Yeah, see, and it's all kind of just panning out because you know what? When you do the same thing over and over again and expect a different result, mm -hmm. okay? There's no such thing as a one-size-fits-all resume. I'm going to tell you that. That is probably one of the top things we hear from employers. Um, you get that template, you fill in the blanks, you send it out, whether you're applying for a maintenance position, uh, chief uh, financial officer, the receptionist, data entry clerk, every single one of them gets the same resume. How people, many people are doing that? It happens all the time. It happens all the time. And, and it doesn't work. It doesn't work. Employers want to have a targeted, focused resume specific to that particular job that they've indicated they needed to fill. And no, that does not mean you have to start it from scratch every single time. There are three basic resume formats that the majority of us can get away with when we're applying for jobs. Uh, the chronological, the functional, and the combination. I'm going to give you a quick overview of all of these, just kind of give you some ideas, hopefully. The chronological. This is, this is the one, if I were to take a poll, I would be willing to bet I got 85 to 90 percent of the people in here are dragging out the, that chronological and going, here you are, Mr. Employer, hire me. Um, because that's the one they teach us in high school. That's the one they give us to work with um, when we come out of school, out of college. This is what your, um, if you have filled out, hopefully you have your a resume in IndianaCareerConnect.com, yeah. That's the main template that they use. And this is a fabulous 
format. It really is. Um, and, and you're going to notice there's a lot of similarity here. But it starts off with, you know, your name, your contact <coughs> information. Hopefully you're putting in a big block of all of your fabulous skills right at the very top where it's easy for that employer to find. And then the reverse chronological order employment. Uh, you know, you've got your occupational title, the company's name, city, state, beginning and ending dates, blah, blah, blah. And then the job you had before that, and that employer, city, state, beginning and ending dates, blah, blah, blah. And then education at the bottom. And this, as I said, this is a fabulous format. If you're continuing your career in the same line that you've always gone, if you're a machine operator, let's say, and you have nothing but machine operating experience behind you, and your skills just keep increasing, and your, your knowledge is all over the place, man, is this a great plan, uh, format for that kind, of, that kind of job. And you're applying for exactly the same thing. So this works really, really great. But it doesn't work in every situation. It doesn't, unfortunately. Uh, this is, the emphasis here is on where and when you work, okay? And again, if you have a lot of experience, um, this will demonstrate that very clearly to the employer. Now, the second type of format is called a functional format. Here, the emphasis is on the skills that you acquired, not when you got them, not where you got them. A lot of it is very similar. Your contact information, name, address, phone number, blah, blah, blah. Uh, your summary of qualifications, again, right there at the top, so it's easy to find. And then we go into skill blocks, okay? Blocks of skills that are all, and, and the beauty of this, you can include every skill you've ever acquired. It doesn't matter when you got it. On the chronological, you know, you're only going back like 15 years maximum. Yeah, don't go any further than that because employers, it can be considered outdated information. But here, you know, if you were a, a cashier at McDonald's, you can put that kind of customer service skill out here. Now, you're not putting McDonald's down here. Heck no. Uh, you put your last three employments, you know, and then how much experience you had with that individual employer, and then your education. But you know what? You can't use this format. Not at all. Because, because, and the reason is, they don't know if this five years of experience, did that end last month or 20 years ago? They have no way of knowing. So you know what happens with this kind of format? Boom. Toss. So then we come down to the combination. And this is kind of like the best of both worlds um, because it has um, your skill blocks, but it has the dates that that employer is looking for. Contact information, name, address, phone number, that qualifications, that summary of skills right at the top. The skill blocks are right there. Your employment history, your occupational title, the employer's name, city, state, beginning and ending dates. They can see that there's recent work history. And that's why they like it. As luck would have it, this happens to be the most easily uh, tweaked, I guess you could say, resume format simply because, um, for instance, in this particular case, let's say that employer that you're sending this resume to is looking for somebody who has a lot of lab skills, okay? Now, right now, they're not going to hire this person because lab skills is their, what, number three best skill set? But if you take this block of skills, and move it up to the top of the resume. Guess what? They're not even number one skills. They don't know. And uh, it doesn't even matter if these skills were acquired at this particular employment or not. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You still get to count them. And again, you're going to talk to other people who will tell you other than what I've just said. And they're right too. <laughs> but I'm right too. <laughs> so um, again, consider all of these because um, different employers are going to be looking for different things. And you just are going to have to feel your way through it. Now, let's talk length. Whoa, boy. This is another place where I can get into a really good argument with the uh, other experts, okay? Um, there are a lot of people that tell you it has to be a one-page resume. It has to be a one-page resume. And then there are those who are going to tell you two pages okay. Two pages is good, especially if you have a lot of experience. You've got to get it all out there, right? And then I actually had a, 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 someone in my workshop tell me that she was told it was okay to have an 11-page resume. Holy oh, no. cannoli, please keep in mind, when employers post a job opening in, in Indiana Career Connect, which is basically the state of Indiana, they're getting anywhere from two to 500 resumes. Can you just see somebody kicking back with a coffee and a smoke and I'm going to read this 11-page resume? They're not going to do it. I'm sorry, they're just not. Um, you got to put your place, yourself in that employer's place. Think about what they're going through, okay? 
They don't want to read 500 resumes. They don't. Uh, they want to read, if they have to, maybe five. Okay, so make it easy for them. Don't make them have to choose, do I read, you know, five <coughs> two-page resumes or this one 11-page resume. So use common sense. Use common sense. Um, things that employers have specifically said they are looking for on resumes, targeted resumes. That, like I said, that template just does not work. They want to know you want have put a little bit of effort into this. You want to make it easy for them to find the skills they're looking for. Okay? Um, and I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to get a much better response off of that one targeted resume than you will sending out 10 generic one-size-fits-all resumes. You will, because employers can tell. They can tell when you put a little effort into it. And if you're putting effort into it before they even hire you, holy cannoli, what are you going to produce if they were to hire you? Yeah, okay, logical. Keywords. Please remember, employers are using scanning software these days. If they have indicated, for instance, they are specifically looking for someone with experience in Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and some experience with Peachtree accounting software, and you send your resume and your generic one size fits all resume and they scan it and they don't find those words, why would they read your resume? There's no reason to. You don't have those baseline skills they indicated were required. So when you read a job posting, notice the terminology that that employer has used to put it in your resume. It's that easy. Um, achievement driven, trust me, uh, employers know what forklift drivers do on a daily basis. They do know. You drive forklift, you unload trucks. Yeah, yeah, they know that. They've written this job description themselves. What they want to know is what did you achieve as a forklift driver? What sets you off head and shoulders above the other forklift drivers? That's what they want to know. What makes you special? special. In a good way. Okay. Huh? Um, skills, not duties. Again, they know what the duties are. What skills are required to execute those duties, to do the tasks of that job? Because those are, these are soft skills. These are hard skills. These are transferable skills. Can you communicate well? That's a transferable skill. It transcends all job lines, if you will. Uh, any kind of baseline computer skills. Because I'm going to tell you right now, virtually any job that you apply for, any job that's out there right now is going to require some interaction with computers. If nothing more than putting in your timesheet on the computer. Uh, I had a guy in one of my workshops, and they, they, they kept sending him back because he was like, I don't need to learn computers, I just want to drive a truck. And I'm like, sir, they've got computers in the cabs these days. You've got to be comfortable with computers. So list your skills, not the duties of the jobs. Use bullets. A bullet on a resume says, look here, this is important. You need to see this, okay? And that's where you put those skills. You put that bullet right there so it's no question in that employer's mind that you have exactly what they're looking for. And white space. Please, please put white space in there. White space, the margins above to the left and the right and below, around your blocks of information, acts like a frame. It sets it off. It makes it easier to read. Uh, I can't tell you how many resumes I've seen where someone has been told, you have to fit it all on one page. And to do that, they narrow the margins, top and bottoms, left and right, and they squish it all in there, single space, and you can put as much bold, and you can put as much italics as you want in there, but it's still hard to read. Make it easy for the employer to see what you're doing. Now, when I say two pages, I'm not talking one page and two lines, okay? I'm talking one page and a third, at least, a, you know, at least maybe a half. Um, if you've got skills, uh, oftentimes what happens is people pull skills off because they can't fit it all into a one-page format. Like I say, consider it. If you've always done a one-page resume, try a two-page resume with a little bit more meat on it, OK? Um, other things employers have told us specifically they either drive them crazy or they absolutely hate or they will just trash out of hand. If it doesn't apply, leave it out. You cannot be all things to all people. If it doesn't apply to the job, you know, being a speed knitter is not going to increase your chances of getting that forklift driving job. It just isn't. Um, you can't be everything to all companies. Uh, they don't want you to be everything. They don't want you to do every job. They want you to do the job that they're looking to hire somebody to do. Not everything in the company. That job. Make sure they know you have all of the skills needed for that job. Spelling and grammar mistakes, oh my goodness. <laughs> Please. Um, 
this, if they find a typographical error, it's over. I'm sorry. If you put down on your resume that you have more than 15 years of restaurant of experience in the restaurant business and misspell restaurant, hello. Um, it says three things about you when they stumble across a typographical or a grammatical error. One, you don't care. Two, you didn't know. Three, you're too lazy to reach over, click that mouse button, and let the computer fix it for you. Now, guess what employers don't hide? Hire people who don't care, don't know, or are lazy. They don't. You cannot have a typographical error spelling mistake. Non-truth? Well, it's almost true, <coughs> but not exactly. If, for instance, you are uh, the only machine operator on the third shift, you are not the supervisor of the third shift machine operators. Mm -hmm. You're not. I'm sorry. Um, your, whatever you say on your resume mm -hmm. has to match what that employer is that you put down if that previous employer matches what they say when they're called for confirmation that you did work there and the dates and all that good stuff. So yeah, don't stretch the truth to make yourself appear better. Be honest about it. Um, not a lot of clutter, don't put windows, pictures, color. Co well, think of it this way. When you create a resume and if you put all those pretty colors on it and it gets faxed, do they see those pretty colors? No, they don't. Uh, if, you, if it gets copied over and over, do they see the pretty colors? No, they don't. Actually, in fact, it might just fade out into nothingness. So don't do that. And you only include a picture if you're going for the uh, nightly news. Then you can put a picture on it. <laughs> All right, references. Not on your resume. Hello. Um, the only name that should be on your resume is your name. You're the one you, that's going for the job, not your references. Now, you are going to have references. You're going to have them on a separate sheet, at least three, OK? Uh, the employers know you're going to have it. You know they could ask for it, so you're going to have it. You don't even need to put references upon request, because they know. They know if they ask for it, you'll produce it. So leave, don't put that on your resume. Use that space to add additional skills. All right. Whew. Hopefully, if you've done your resume and you've caught that reader's eye, that employer's eye, now they're going to call you in for an interview. That's what resumes are for. They're not going to get you the job. Uh, did I mention that? Yeah. They hopefully will get you the interview. That's where you're going to secure the job. <coughs> um, First off, please know at this point you've already beat out anywhere from 200 to 499 other people. Uh, unless, of course, they posted that job on, um, like, Monster, Career Builder, then you may have beat out as many as 5,000 other people who all are applying for that position. So, but this is not the time to kick back and assume you have the job. Not, not, not. Um, a lot of times people will say, well, I'm done. I'm back to interview. I'm in like Flint. Um, and that's not a given. It's not a given. Because this is when you start to need to practice. This is not the time to fly by the seat of your pants and just make it up as you go. Because you know what happens? You open your mouth and stupid stuff comes out. I can vouch for that because I do this all the time. Um, you have to practice what you're going to say. Uh, because again, you'll find that it sounds fabulous in your head and then you open your mouth and just what? So practice what you're going to say. You have to bring your stories. I tell this to people all the time and they look like, at me like I'm crazy. But that's how humans learn. That's how you learn about a thing. You hear a story and you figure out what's going on with it. You have to paint a mental picture for that employer and using action verbs so they can actually see you doing the job. Because if they can see you doing that job, it's that much easier for you to, for them to hire you again. You know, I, I always use the example, um, I used to do drive forklifts, so I get to do this, okay? I'm not slamming forklift drivers. You know, I could go in and if I was in an interview, well, yeah, I used to do or I can go in and I say, I drive forklifts. Man, that sounds like I just jumped off the machine to come in and talk to these folks, doesn't it? That's the way you've got to set it up. You need to know something about the company. Please remember, you're going in there asking them to give you money. You should know what they produce. You should know what they manufacture. You should know what their end product is, regardless. Okay? We hear this over and over and over. Do your homework. Go online. Google the company. You'll find all kinds of information, and then you won't sound like a cluck when you get in there talking to them. You also have to demonstrate confidence. This is something else. You know, if you're not confident in your skills, in your presentation of yourself, how can you expect that employer to be? You know, so you have to demonstrate confidence in your attitude. Stand up straight. Meet them in their eyes. Practice that handshake so that if you give the perception of being confident, even though. More than likely, your nervous is all get out and ready to throw up in your shoes. But give them the perception of confidence, okay? 
and use positive present current tense language and future tense too. I am, I can, I will. Not only what I've done in the past, what I'm doing now, what I'm capable of now, and what I'm going to do for you in the future. Make yourself attracted to that employer. Other things that we know about. <laughs> Control yourself. Please, please, please. Um, and as I said, when you're nervous, as we all are, because let's face it, most interviews are just the most nerve-wracking thing you can think of, what happens is you start running your mouth. Yeah. Um, if you ever find yourself in a situation where you're talking about your significant other's quirky little uh, habits, um, your kid's t-ball game, or your hamster breeding program, you need to stop. Okay? That's not when they ask, you know, tell me about yourself. This isn't the stuff they did not want to know. They always tell people, please don't be offended, but shut up. Answer the question, answer it completely, and then stop. Trust me, it works out much better that way. And please, make some effort. Um, <laughs> dress appropriately. I know we're a much more casual society than we've ever been in the past. But you got to make some effort. Uh, I was talking to an employer, and uh, he said he was amazed at the number of people who showed up for their interviews in Crocs, cargo shorts, and make a death t shirts which evidently seems to be the uh, interview outfit of the day. Uh, now he's, and his point was, if you know, he put on a shirt and tie, the least they could have done was the same. And I always hear, well, I'm going to wear this on the job. Well, you wear that on the job as soon as you get the job. You don't have that job yet. Make an effort. Present. Okay? Um, and being the best person for the job is no guarantee you're going to get that job unless you can convince that employer that you're the best person for the job in the way you present yourself, in the skills that you present, uh, in the terminology, the language of the interview that you give, in your confidence. Yeah, you need to convince that employer that you are the ideal person. I always say, think of it like this. When an employer posts a job, they're basically saying, I have a problem. I want to open an office on the west side, but I can't because I don't have a manager. I have a problem. Be the solution to their problem. When you're the solution to their problem, how could they resist you? Yeah, they can. All right? You have to learn the rules of the game. And then you have to play better than anyone else. But you have to know the rules. Guess what? We know the rules. And uh, as luck would have it, as luck would have it, we got a workshop for all of this. A lot more of this, actually. Um, please consider uh, coming down to any of our Work One offices. We all offer the same sort of workshops. We can, you're using information employers are telling us. We can tell you what they are saying so that you can be their ideal candidate. And that's what's going to be 